Good morning, boys and girls. This is Miss Sandy, and it's time for Sunday School. Moses has gotten some special plans up on Mount Sinai from God. God wanted to give him a pattern of something, a pattern of something to make that God could live. This pattern was called a tabernacle, and this tabernacle that he would build is where God would dwell with his people, to be right in the middle of the people. But this tabernacle was also to be a sanctuary, a set apart. It was going to be a holy place. So God is giving these instructions. These instructions are found in Exodus 25, and you can begin reading and looking at that and studying on your own. And that God said in 25, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. The tabernacle was made up of two parts. There was an inside and there was an outside part. The outside part had linen all around it, a cloth that was to be pure linen or fine linen. And there were posts along the sides, 20 on the long side and 10 on the shorter side. These helped to hold up the linen. The linen stopped the people from coming too close. For remember, this tabernacle was to be a sanctuary, a holy place, and linen was put outside that the people would know, stop, we can't go in as we are. Where did this linen come from? And all the other things that were going to have to be used to make this tabernacle. Well, when the Israelites were leaving Egypt, after the Pharaoh had finally released them, the Egyptians that lived nearby gave them many things, gold and silver and cloth, as you can see here. They are giving to the people and they gave gladly, for they feared God. They were so afraid that God would have to kill all the Egyptians if the Pharaoh had not let the people go. So they gave everything that they had of worth to these people. Now, God wanted his people, the Israelites, to now give to Moses all of the different things, the gold and the silver, and all of this that was given would be used to make the tabernacle. These people gave willingly, and God said that's the way he wanted it. He wanted the people to give willingly the things that were needed. And the linen, this is the first part we're looking at, the linen was given willingly. Boys and girls, our lessons uh, over the next few weeks are going to be about these parts of the tabernacle. Each and every part was important. God gave Moses the instructions for each and everything that went inside the inner place and outside the outer, outer court, as well as how to have a border around it. God had a special plan because God wanted the people to understand him, to begin to learn about him as being holy, but also to learn that in the future, someone was coming. So the people also could be saved from their sins. Here is an example of the linen that we were talking about going around on the outside. Linen stands for righteousness. Righteousness just means doing right things. This area of righteousness that were blocked off was very holy place. The Bible talks about the priests coming, and as they ministered, they had on white and would minister in the outer courts, and some with special linen 
outfits in the inner courts. Also, the Bible talks about David having linen on and dancing before the Lord as the people were bringing to the city the Ark of the Covenant. And this was righteous. Think of that. He dressed in righteousness. He dressed so that he could dance before the Lord and be holy unto the Lord. Another place in the Bible that it is mentioned is in Daniel. Daniel had a heavenly visitor, and that visitor had linen on and spoke with Daniel of the things of heaven. Another place in the Bible that we see that linen is about righteousness is because of Jesus. Look at Jesus. This is when he died. They wrapped him in linen cloths and laid him in a tomb. His righteousness, how good he was. So we see linen there. But boys and girls, we also see linen on us. Revelation talks about the people of God wearing linen. We're called the bride of Christ. And that linen means we're holy, holy before the Lord. But boys and girls, the Bible also tells us how we are not holy. Have you ever gotten into a mud hole and you were just dirty from head to toe? And I bet your mom or your dad looked at you and said, listen, you are filthy. Get in this house and we're going to wash you with soap and water. Well, the Bible talks about that. It says in, in Isaiah 64 that our righteousness, our own trying to do what is right, is like filthy rags before God. There is no one who can be righteous on their own. But boys and girls, you know, we have someone to help us, and that is Jesus. And we're looking at this that the linen is there to say to the people, you're not righteous. You can't come in this way. But boys and girls, we're going to see how the people could come in to this special place. Now, would you like having this? Or do you want one day to be dressed in the beautiful dresses? We can't even see it very well here. But all of heaven in beautiful linen because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Let's ask the Lord to help us now. Dear Jesus, we want your righteousness because ours is like filthy rags. We can't be good enough, but Jesus, you died on the cross for us. You never did anything wrong, just like with being wrapped in that linen. It just shows you were pure, and you did nothing wrong. And we thank you for that, Jesus, that you were righteous to the end, and you rose from the grave that we might be righteous before God. So thank you, Jesus. I believe you are the Son of God, and you gave your life for me because I cannot even die myself to save me from my sins. But thank you, Jesus, that you did it for me. We ask in your precious name, Lord Jesus, amen. All right, boys and girls, I am so glad to be able to talk about this first part. I felt led in, in the linen curtains around the outside. And we'll talk more. Well, hello, Timmy. Hello, Miss Sandy. Well, how are you? What have you got on? I put on that righteousness, the linen. I put on the righteousness. Did you ask Jesus into your heart? Uh-huh. I love Jesus. Well, I tell you what, you will have some wonderful righteous robe as well one day. And you will see. Uh, that one doesn't fit you so very well. That's okay. 
I just wanted to put it on. I thought it would be fun. Yes, it is fun to dress up, isn't it? It is. I like it. Righteousness of God. I'm the righteousness of God because of Jesus Christ. That's right, Timmy. I'm glad you showed up. I wasn't sure you are going to be here today, but welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. Well, you're here in time to say bye-bye, boys and girls. <gasps> bye-bye, boys and girls.